a lot of the time. We showed that DNA, K, DNA, K, and GRP in the purified system, they disassemble the complex. So lambda replicates by assembling a complex here, but the complex has to disaggregate. And these guys disaggregated the complex, so replication can start. The other two genes we discovered is Pro-ES and pro -EL, and these guys were necessary for the formation of the capsid of the phage. So you make a capsid, empty capsid, the DNA goes inside, then you put a tail, and then the cell lysis. So after about 40 minutes, you get about 200 phage project. So this is, in 1970, IRA and I have reported our results in a meeting at Cosby Harbor about phage lambda. And believe it or not, this is the slide we used in 1970 to explain our mutants. And that's actually about growing. Okay? And so basically, look at this. We thought that E. coli is a function. We did not know it at the time. And this is the, the shape of it, wild type. This is an X-ray uh, structure at about, I don't know, 50 <laughs> amps. But it looks like that. It really looks like that. <laughs> and then lambda makes an adapter that looks like this, so lambda can grow. You get lambda growth, and you get equal light growth. Then what we said, we have found mutants. And these mutants now look like this. So of course, the lambda adapter cannot interact, so you get no lambda growth. And somehow, because this guy is mutated at 42 degrees, 43 degrees, you don't get any growth. So this protein is essential for lambda at all temperatures, but for E. coli at 42, 43. And then how does lambda mutate? Well, you can mutate this guy, so now the, uh, the log and key kind of model of enzyme uh, interaction and function, and there you are. And now you get a growth of lambda, but not you know, this for growth of E. coli at high temperature. And by the way, that's me in 1970. <laughs> so now, another thing that probably most people don't know is I continued this work at the University of Geneva, and I was working on the third floor, and I was working on DNA KA and GROEL. As the crow flies 20 meters from me, on the fourth floor was Alfred TCA. And at that time, Alfred TCA was in sabbatical when I arrived. He went to Mitchell's lab, and he took salivary glands, and he put them in S35 methionine, and then Uli Lamy had developed the STS system, so he actually put them on STS and found the heat shock protein. So Alfred was working on, on HSP70, I was working on DNAK, and we had no idea until 1984, when Betty Craig's lab sequenced DNAK and said, hey, this is 50% identical to HSP70. Okay. So the two of us were working together, but we had no idea <laughs> that we were working with the same protein. And Alfred was a very, very good Swiss, a Valaisan, and he wanted, at those days, the good old Swiss men had to go to the army until the age of 55, make sure nobody invades Switzerland and steal the gold. So there you are. <laughs> this is uh, Alfred this year, about 50 plus, very proud. He was a captain in the army. That's very high for Switzerland.